Triple doubles continue to happen frequently on the nightly basis in the pace and space era. LeBron James has had plenty of those throughout his career, while young stars in Nikola Jokic and Ben Simmons already have had monster all-around numbers in a couple playoff games. Both will continue to produce for many postseasons to come. How's it going guys? My name's Wilson. Today, we'll take a look at 10 of the most prolific triple doubles in postseason history. Not the craziest triple doubles, but the most impactful where the players help carry their teams to victory in big games, a couple of which in championship clinching games. Number 10, Steve Nash, May 18, 2005 semifinals game 5 against his former team, the Dallas Mavericks. An MVP type performance, 34 points, 13 boards, 12 dimes. These numbers might not be that crazy, but this is one of the best Steve Nash games that stood out to me. Being unbelievable all series, the revolution of the small ball ahead of his time under Mike D'Antoni, Nash's greatness was as pure as it got. Did whatever he wanted, whenever he wanted. Against a 58 win team after a monster 48 point game 4 performance in the loss he made sure Phoenix came out on top down 7 at halftime his pick and roll with Amari was on full display Nash absolutely destroyed abused annihilated and humiliated the Mavs defense especially Eric Dampier on all cylinders his mid-range jumpers looked like layups if the shots weren't there Nash just dumped it to Amari or Sean Marion down low Getting easy layups all game, Dallas had absolutely no answers for the MVP, scored 22 of his 34 points in the second half when his team needed him most, made it look effortless. Number 9, Russell Westbrook, April 19, Game 2 of the 2017 playoffs, first round against Houston. If his team would have won, this performance would have been ranked higher. A staggering 51 points, 10 rebounds, 13 assists, absolute absurd numbers. Became the first player to ever have a 50-point triple-double in playoff history after capping off a historic regular season, owning an NBA record 42 triple doubles. Russ didn't have the supporting cast to step up, went just 2 of 11 from 3. Second leading scorer Andre Robertson had a dozen, Victor Oladipo MIA 11 points, although James Harden had 35, Eric Gordon and Lou Williams each had over 20 off the bench in the Rockets 115-111 win. OKC left for most of the game but didn't have enough in the tank to close it out, had to rely on Westbrook all series. Every time Russ got a little rest, the team was screwed, ended up losing the series and five. Number 8, Jerry West, May 5th, 1969, Game 7 of the Finals. In a heartbreaking losing effort, the logo finished his career with a 1-8 Finals record, constantly falling into the hands of the Celtics. His 42-point, 13-rebound, 12-assist performance remains one of the most forgotten stat lines in NBA Finals history. One of the best performances in defeat, the home team won every game before being tied 3-3. A courageous effort, West also battled with a pulled hamstring. Boston led 91-76 after 3, Will Chamberlain picked up his 5th out early fourth with just over five minutes left landed awkwardly when grabbing a rebound hurt his knee head coach butch van burned a cough refused to put will back in the game an absolute travesty of a decision says the lakers were playing better without him after the lakers came close boston's don nelson sank the mid-range shot off the back rim and in a dagger la then committed costly turnovers if the lakers would have came back and won west's triple double would have been number one on my list but unfortunately another devastating defeat the best player all season Series, averaged 38 points for the seven games. His performance earned him the first and only finals MVP on a losing team. Number seven, Larry Bird, May 13, 1984, Eastern Conference Finals, Game 7, 39 points, 12 rebounds, 10 assists, 13 of 24 from the field. An intense battle with the New York Knicks, second round matchup. Larry Legend elevated his greatness against MVP runner-up Bernard King, leaving no doubt who was the real MVP. King had 24 points, but Burt was lighting it up with the incredible fadeaways from the get-go. 15 in the first period, had 28 points at halftime, connected on 6 of his first 7 shots. The game was never close, out-rebounded every Nick Big, and had more dimes than anybody in the game. A spectacular performance. Number 6, Rajan Rondo, May 9, 2010 playoffs Game 4 against Cleveland. The 24-year-old became a first-time All-Star that season, led the league in steals, a 14-10 guy, had a monster stat line of 29 points, 18 rebounds, 13 assists, 2 steals, with his team down 2 games to 1 to the favorite Cavaliers. With all the pressure on the seas, MVP LeBron had a monster 38 points Game 3 performance. Since the Big 3 were getting old, the 6-1 point guard had one of the best games of his life set the tone from the start, getting to the basket at will, used his speed and athleticism to draw fouls, knocked down the open mid-range jumper, not hesitant, made the hustle plays, had 5 rebounds the first 11 minutes of the game, got to the basket, 
hitting the runners, took responsibility, arguably had his prettiest assist midair behind the back in transition as LeBron was trying to chase down the beautiful dish to Tony Allen, a play that boosted the momentum of the game for the Celtics, earning his triple-double after three quarters, directing traffic and communicating with his teammates the whole game, crashing the glass inside, a brilliant performance, Boston would go on to win the series, knock off Orlando in the conference finals, but fell short to Kobe's Lakers in the finals. Number 5, Charles Barkley's insane 43 points, 15 rebounds, 10 assists, 2 steal, 2 block game on 16 of 22 shooting. Game 5 Western Conference Finals against the Sonics June 1st, 1993. An MVP type performance against the 55 win Sonics led by Gary Payton, Sean Kem, and Ricky Pierce. A team that knocked off Hakeem's Rockets. It's unfortunate Barkley will always be remembered losing to Jordan in the 93 Finals. His greatness should never be questioned. In a super competitive series, Barkley was draining the mid range jumpers, putting in work in transition. Too strong, too powerful down low, the no look passes, no way was he ever going to be denied. A man amongst boys, whether it was going through two guys, it didn't matter. Sir Charles was an absolute game changer and a top 3 player in his prime. In game 7, Barkley had a 44-24 masterpiece. Although he's a hair short of 6'5", Barkley played like he was 7'5", just killing guys on the pulse. Number 4, Larry Bird, 1986 Finals, Game 6, June 8th. Even though it was a blowout, Larry Legend played as great a game as anybody. Although he didn't go off for 40, Bird finished with 29 points, 11 rebounds, 12 assists, 3 steals, 8 of 17 shooting. His numbers don't describe how incredibly dominant he was this game, but his impact was on a whole nother level. The 86 Celtics remains one of the best teams in NBA history. Bird even said himself, this was the best game he's ever played. Perfect rotations on defense, read every play from the Rockets, which was why the game wasn't competitive. Offensively, the three-time MVP was three steps ahead of everybody, leading to easy baskets, had all the hustle plays, did all the dirty work, even won a jump ball over Hakeem Olajuwon, knew where his teammates were at all times, a complete all-around game, so good, he single-handedly outscored Hakeem and Ralph Sampson, combined. Nothing the defense could have done to stop him after getting the ball down low. Bird decided to dribble out and randomly shoot a three. The dagger in the coffin said it was the only game he was ever truly prepared for. Capture championship number three, sweet 16 for the franchise. Display his full body of work for the series. Bird averaged 24 points, almost 10 rebounds, 10 and a half assists. 2.7 steals since this game wasn't that close and it wasn't a game 7 I would have ranked this performance higher on my list number 3 Tim Duncan 2003 finals June 15 game 6 against New Jersey Pete Duncan was as perfect a power forward anybody has ever seen 21 points 20 rebounds 10 assists 8 blocks the MVP carried his team to the finals without another all-star a guaranteed 2010 guy in his prime each and every night his performance this game was better than number 2 and number 1 on my list but the two I have ranked above him happened in game 7. And this was a game 6 against the Nets. San Antonio was already up 3-2. The 6-11 power forward did everything defensively. Always had a hand up. Contest shots. Absolutely destroyed, abused, annihilated, and humiliated Kenya Martin, held him to 3 of 23 shooting the whole game. New Jersey couldn't buy a basket. After San Antonio went on the 19 0 run in the fourth, a very controversial decision by the NBA to take away two blocks from Duncan's stat line, which arguably should have counted, would have given him the first quadruple double in playoffs history. Being the best player on both ends of the floor, David Robinson was on his last legs, retired after. Tony Parker was just 21. Manu Ginobili's first NBA season, absolutely one of the best finals performances all time for the series. Timmy D averaged over 24 points, 17 rebounds, over 5 assists, 5.5 five blocks, and a steal. Number 2, 1988 Finals, June 21st, James Worthy, 36 points, 16 rebounds, 10 assists, 15 of 22 shooting. The Lakers trailed 3-2 before winning Game 6 and 7, looking to become the first team to repeat since Russell Celtics. The Bad Boys were no easy task, and the biggest stage, Worthy was absolutely relentless. Bulldoze through the physical pistons on the post, the teardrops, crashed the boards, earned extra possessions thanks to his scrappy play. The Lakers franchise used to lose in heartbreaking fashion in previous years game 7 of the finals. Falling 5 times the deciding title games over the previous 34 years, Magic Johnson also deserves plenty of credit for his 19.14 assist game. Brian Scott had 14 of his 21 in the 4th, Worthy's all around game earned him the finals MVP over Magic, an underappreciated performance that doesn't get talked about enough, capped off his 3rd NBA title, the 5th for the Lakers in the 80s, earned the nickname Big Game James. 
Number 1, LeBron James June 19, 2016 Finals Game 7. Given the stakes and historic context, overcoming adversity, this deserves to be number 1 on the list. 27 points, 11 rebounds, 11 assists, 2 steals, 3 blocks, 9 of 24 shooting, capped off by an insane block. This was nowhere close to the best LeBron James game we've seen. He had way more games with better numbers, but did whatever he needed to get the job done. Cleveland became the first team to come back from a 3-1 deficit. James deserves plenty of credit. The two games before, dropping 41 apiece, his teammates were all on the same page with the help of Kyrie Irving, J.R. Smith, and Kevin Love. The mental toughness of the Cavs was never to be questioned, took advantage of Golden State's vulnerabilities, blocked one of Steph Curry's layups in the second quarter, rejected a Leandro Barbosa shot, trusted his teammates to knock down shots. Absolutely took advantage of Festus Azili, being switched onto him in the fourth quarter, sank the one free throw he needed to seal the game, ended Cleveland's 52 year professional sports title drought, fulfilling his greatest basketball accomplishment and helping the franchise win its first ever NBA title. A moment that highly elevated his legacy, overcoming all sorts of adversity, just an incredible performance. Even though Larry Bird's Game 6 of the 86 Finals or Duncan's Game 6 in the 03 Finals had better overall games, they already won championships with the franchise and it wasn't a Game 7. James led the greatest finals comeback against a 73 win team to cap off an incredible 2016 season. Honorable mentions include Oscar Robertson, two 40-point triple-doubles in the 63 playoffs. Game 2 against the Syracuse Nationals, 41 points, 15 rebounds, 12 dimes, also in the semis. Game 1 against Boston, 43, 14, and 10, won that game, but came up short in 7 games to the dominating Celtics. March 22, 1967, Will Chamberlain against Cincinnati, 37 points, 27 rebounds, 11 assists. Wilt and Russell might have had crazy triple-doubles if blocks were recorded in the 60s, but we'll never know for sure. Michael Jordan, 1993 Conference Finals, Game 5 against New York, 29 points, 10 rebounds, 14 assists, not his best game, but did everything he needed to win, just as terrific on the defensive end. Chris Paul's 27 point, 13 rebound, 15 assists, Game 4 against the Lakers, 2011 first round series, proving why he was the best point guard in the NBA, reminded people who counted him out after missing time with injury, single-handedly won two games on a less talented roster against the two-time defending champs. What's your all-time favorite playoff triple-double? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video. I love all of you. See you next time.